Hello, and welcome back to the Blogger Genius Podcast. I'm your host, Jillian Leslie, founder of Milo Tree. If you haven't heard, Milo Tree is your all in one suite for growing your online business. It includes Milo Tree Cart, the easiest way to sell digital products in under five minutes, Milo Tree Leads, which allows you to collect email subscribers by offering unlimited freebies, and the Milo Tree pop-up app for boosting your social media followers. Our goal at Milo Tree is to help you grow your audience, build your customer base, and sell to them. If this sounds intriguing, go to MiloTree.com and you can learn all about it. And if you want to get on a free 20 minute strategy call with me, and you can see if our tools are right for you, head to MiloTree.com slash meet, because I would love to meet you. For today's episode, I am thrilled to have Tammy Overhoff from Reset and Flourish back on the show. So Tammy is an old school food blogger. She focuses on meal and freezer prep, and it's all for healthier living and weight loss. Today, Tammy is sharing all about her sales funnels. In part one that I will link to in the show notes, we talked about digital products, and I asked her back to really go deep into sales funnels. So what she shares is, what her sales funnels look like, how she put them together with the different products she sells, and even what her email sequences look like. Now, just remember, Tammy's funnels have lots of moving parts and they've taken her years to build, plus lots of trial and error. So Tammy also shares how if she were starting today from scratch, how she would think about building sales funnels out piece by piece. This is an episode you do not want to miss. So without further delay, here is my interview with Tammy Overhoff. Tammy, welcome back to the Blogger Genius Podcast. Thank you so much, Jillian. I've been once again looking forward to this since our last call. I love talking strategy. I love talking digital products. So once again, I'm ready to dive in. So ask me anything you want. Great. Well, What after our first recording, what I realized is you have all of these strategies and we kind of glossed over them in part one, but now I'm ready to dive in. Mm -hmm. I feel like you and I are so in the same mindset when it comes to what I call building your digital product empire. And -hmm. people look at me and go, Empire, I'm selling an ebook. And I say, No. It's a strategy. It's about putting all the pieces together, but at each step, testing those pieces, figuring Mm -hmm. out how to tweak them so that they all work together to build out this empire. So if I were to ask you, Tammy, how would you even start to think about this? Yeah. Well, let me tell you, I've learned, I've had many lessons learned over the last decade or so. I've made many mistakes. So learn from my mistakes. One of my biggest mistakes was definitely almost trying to do too much all the time, but thinking I was building this empire when really the more spread out you are, the less effective you are. So one of the things that I really recommend to people is to just stay as focused as possible because when you are trying to create all these different digital products and all these different things, you think you're building this empire, but really you're kind of like diluting your your whole digital product strategy. So one of the first things that I talk about is you really just want to focus in on one problem. And then you want to focus in on one path that leads to the solution to that problem. And when you can really hone in on that, that's when you 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 will be able to create that strategy that takes your audience on that journey from baby step to final step. And I can go over what that looks like as well. And so when you're thinking about a problem you solve, Let's give some examples. One might be like for you to lose weight and get healthier. Sure. And I actually, let me give you a 
a good example coming from my own experience. So with Reset and Flourish and Organize Yourself Skinny, my overall theme, I guess you can say, or problem was always to help people lose weight through these habits and routines that help them to organize their lifestyle. And within that was meal prep, freezer prep, all exercise, um, exercise calendar, routines, challenges, whatever. And the problem was my opt-ins and my products were all over the place. So even though you would think people would be able to come in and all these, you know, in all these different paths when they're looking for weight loss or organizing their weight loss, in reality, it confused them. So mm -hmm. what I started to do Wait, wait, wait I want to about... stop you there. Oh, Give sure. me Go some ahead. examples of when you're like, yeah, I could do this opt-in or this opt-in. Like okay. what kinds of opt-ins then were you offering that got confusing? Okay. So perfect example. Part of my, one of my strategies is using freezer prep and meal prep to lose weight. And what I learned when I was doing these opt-ins over the years, and I still use them, but I'm in the process of changing them up right now. There's people who want to meal prep, but they don't necessarily want to lose weight. But then there's people who want to lose weight and they know that meal prep is a great way to do it. So I was attract on one hand, I'm attracting the people that I want, the people who want to eat healthy, lose weight, they want to do meal prep. But then I also started attracting people who wanted to learn about meal prep and freezer prep, but they were like, but I really don't want the weight loss information attached to it. So I started, instead of just honing in on that weight loss component of it, I tried serving both audiences and that started to stretch me thin. So now another example would be, I have my weight loss course with my Facebook a private group for that. I have my meal prep, my meal prep course, my private group for that. And what I'm working on now is now is building that one path where everyone that comes in wants to eat healthier, wants the, you know, wants to lose weight and meal prep and freezer prep is one of the ways that we do that. So they're not just coming in saying, well, we just want meal prep and not the weight loss. I want the people right from the beginning who are saying, I want to learn how to eat healthier, lose weight, and I want meal prep to be a part of that solution for me. So one of the ways that I've started to do that, because I've been thinking a lot about that over the last couple of weeks, is building out an opt-in that leads into my 10 day healthy eating challenges kit as a tripwire. And I know we'll talk about that. That then turns into an upsell, which is my, uh, my overall reset and flourish ultimate bundle, which includes all of my eBooks. And then ultimately, then the other upsell is my weight loss course. And then that leads into my membership, but everything now is, will be one path, not all these different paths that people can join whether, you know, whether they want to lose weight or not, it's going to be people who want to get healthy, want to lose weight. They want to use meal prep, freezer prep, and all of my strategies to help them do that on their journey. So the key there is getting that baby step, right? Essentially. And the baby step is ultimately, I want to lose weight and get healthy. Then yes. you're going to teach them different strategies for doing that. Whereas before yes. one of your strategies became a way in, but that wasn't, you weren't attracting that ideal person who's raising their hand and saying, I want to get healthy and lose weight. Like that's yes. your North star. Yes. The baby step is more like the opt-in. So what is that first little step that I can get someone to take where they're just getting started and they're ultimately will that they'll ultimately ultimately want my 10 day healthy challenges kit. Like that's their next step. So the baby step will be like a three or five day challenge I'm putting together. And then from there, they will move into that next step. They'll be offered that next step of 
the healthy eating challenges kit. And then from there, they just go through. So say this again, your first baby step is you are going to run a challenge. This is your opt-in or freebie, something you're giving away for somebody's email address. So after they've joined your free challenge, what is the first thing you are selling them as you move down the funnel? So after the challenge, they will be offered the 10 day healthy eating challenges kit. Is it similar? And what does that mean? It's the next step. So that means, so one of the reasons I even put together the 10 day eating, um, healthy eating challenges kit is because people wanted that easy step to start changing their habits, but they weren't ready for this, like a program yet. They weren't ready for all these restrictions, all these things. So with that, it's all you need to do is change one habit. So let's start with the smoothie challenge. All you need to do is drink one smoothie every day for 10 days. And what happens is when they do that 10 day challenge, they are experiencing quick wins. They're feeling motivated. Now they feel ready. Now they feel ready to take on more changes in their lifestyle. Now they feel ready to do a program and, you know, move to that next step. So the five day getting started, the focus to reset challenge, that is just like getting them ready, like starting to work on their mindset, putting in these very small habits. Once they can see that they can do that, they're like, wow, I could do that. In the 10 days, is that an email series that gets sent automatically every day? So if they purchased If they purchase the 10 day healthy eating challenges kit, they automatically go into an onboarding sequence and that walks them through the entire healthy eating challenges kit. So, and it's like a 15 day onboarding sequence. So it's longer and it really works on nurturing them and helping them get started you know, did you guys remember you guys bought here? You bought this. Let me help you. Let's get started with this. Here are some tips. But how, what are the, what are the deliverables and how much do you charge for this? So the healthy eating challenges kit full price is $29.97 and they, when it's on sale, I offer it to them for $19. So when they purchase it for $19, they automatically are given an upsell offer for the entire ultimate reset and flourish bundle, which includes my um, organize yourself skinny ebook workbook and my freezer prep freezer to flourish. And that's 44 97. And many people buy that. And I just started testing that in the last like few weeks. And that's really what got me thinking about the linear, you know, just having that linear model and then I, then I was like, you know what, I'm going to add on my weight loss program as a second, as a one-time offer. So they can purchase, they purchase the, the healthy eating challenges kit. They get the upsell for the ultimate bundle that now becomes one, one price. So for, it will say for oh, it's 44 97. So they bought that after they buy that, it goes now to a one-time offer. And I have a video. So the only people who get that one-time offer are only the people who purchase my upsell it went, went through the 10-day healthy eating challenges kit. And I have a video and I show I show my face. I, I congratulate them for purchasing the bundle. I tell them this is, you're the only ones who get this offer. If you made it this far, you're telling me you're ready. Like that's basically what I say. I walk them through the entire um, weight loss program. I show them everything and people have been buying that too. So again, it really confirms to me how important it is to get people in at the, get them in at that baby step, step, the right people and move them through that process. And now those people will be offered my membership in about a month. Okay. So I want to tell this back to you because there are a lot of moving parts. (laughs) Yes. I'm sorry. I know. I hope it's not confusing for people because I know it is a lot. Well, but here, okay. I come in five day free challenge at the end of the free challenge. I'm ready to start my weight loss journey. So what you're saying is you're going to sell me a new 10 day challenge where I 
start on my diet. And this is $19. And then from what I understand, you're gonna upsell me. So this is the third step in the funnel where I can get a bundle of materials, including this 10 day challenge. So it's what, something like $44, which will include the product for $19. Yes. And if they purchase the upsell, the 10 day healthy eating challenges kit comes with that. So technically they only need to spend an extra $20 to get everything. And they're getting a bunch of other resources to help them prep, to kind of give them more support in terms of other products. Yes. Then you're saying to them, Hey, now that you bought this for 40 something dollars, Now Mm -hmm. is this when you start introduce, there's a second upsell that's your weight loss course, right? So they get the upsell, the reset and flourish bundle. That's that. They purchased that. It's theirs. It's sent to them. But now because they bought that, they've unlocked this one-time offer to get into the weight loss program at a drastically discounted price. But it doesn't include- What is this program? So this program now takes everything- but it adds to it adds the mindset component to it. I break it down into four phases. So we talk about phase one, which is mindset, awareness, accountability. I walk them through that. Then we talk about how to layer in different habits. Now they're getting videos and lessons on how to meal prep, how to freezer prep. So it's really taking everything that they see in the Reset and Flourish bundle but now it's broken down and explained to them even more through my four phases of weight loss and how they are able to layer everything and create this environment overall that supports their weight loss efforts. Okay, so if they bought your upsell, it unlocks this one-time offer to buy your weight loss course. Yes, this is all self-led. So it is that this does not include coaching calls. This does not include the Facebook group and all or the Zoom calls or anything. It's literally everything mapped out for them, laid out for them, step by step by step. And that's why they get it for a discount. But they will be offered down the road the opportunity to join my membership which will now be all of my people that it's offered to everyone that purchases my products where we, I host live challenges in there. That's where I show up and do live workshops. That's where they get additional recipes and the weekly meal plans that I curate for them every single week and, and send out to the people, the members in my group. So it's all like a process, you know, and it's all like getting them, and, and they get offered that through the different email sequences that I put together. So once they purchase the weight loss program, they're now in an onboarding sequence that is supporting them through the through that program. So talking to them about the different phases, where they could, you know, what they should do this day or what they should do first, just, you know, walking them through it. And then after two months, they're given the opportunity if you want to join these live challenges, if you want if you want to have that additional support, you can join the Reset and Flourish planner for nineteen dollars. So wait, a wait, month. okay. So, so how much? A- so I'm I'm feeling like you've got your free. Cha- I'm always going back. Free five day challenge. Yeah, sells that's okay. to the ten day challenge with the upsell of more ebooks and things like that. Then there is the next piece, the course. How much do you sell that for? So that is, I'm only selling for $67. So when someone buys that and the upsell of the bundle, it's a hundred, like I think $110. So to me, like for a self-led, like a digital product, that just continues to sell, like I'm happy with that. And then getting them into my membership later on, which will be the monthly fee. So if they get everything, it's like $110. I'm not sure of the total math, but it's definitely over $100. Okay, got it. And you're then putting them through another well, another series where ultimately two months down the road, they get invited into the membership. 
Yes. And how much is the membership per month? The membership per month, you know, I go back and forth. I haven't landed right now on, I've, I've charged everything from $9.95 and I think I'm moving more towards $19.95 because I do host live challenges in there. I ho- I do so much live in there and they're getting a meal plan every week. Like there's a lot of upkeep to it. But uh, you know, it's all about what is the what is your audience willing to pay for? So the sweet spot for me where people don't they they like paying for it, they don't cancel all the time is usually like 997. But then you have to get volume. So you know, and, and which is fine. So when I start to see that the volume, if I can get that type of volume, that's bringing in maybe three to five thousand um, dollars a month for that membership or more, then that's fine. But and this is the one thing that I always teach with pricing: it's your business. You can test it. You know, no one's going back to the sales page and and looking to see what someone else paid. Like once they buy it, I've never had that ever. So it's okay. I'm always testing to see, well, what's what's a good price for this? What's a good price for that? Um, let it run for a little bit and then, you know, I'll leave it or I'll change it up, whatever needs to happen. If you are listening to this episode and thinking to yourself, this sounds really cool, but I don't even have a product yet. No problem. I've got your back go grab my 13 AI prompts to write your first ebook. All you do is go prompt by prompt, and within a couple hours, you will have an ebook to sell. To grab this, go to mylotree.com slash ebook prompts. mylotree.com slash ebook prompts. So please don't put this off. Start building your digital product empire today. And now back to the show. I'm a broken record, but I just want to lay this out for everybody. Five day free challenge leads to a 10 day paid program to start your weight loss journey. Then you offer a bundle, which includes this 10 day challenge and a variety of other resources to help you. After that, they get offered the course, and after another couple of months, they get offered the membership. How long is that funnel? Definitely at least three months. So three about months. three, to, yeah, about, about three months, and depending many, on what they buy. How many email automation series did this take to set up? Well, now, and this is the reason why I did it this way. Now I have like, there's going to be one. So everyone that comes in will go in through the five day challenge. So that's where I, that is my goal. Everyone will be funneled in through that five day challenge. And then if they end up buying the healthy eating challenges kit, then they move on to that onboarding sequence for everyone that purchased that. If they don't, then they will just go into a regular, what I like to call my nurture to sales evergreen sequences. And in those sequences, I just give lots of good content. I lead, I direct them at times to my Shopify store. So it's always nurturing, but I'm always giving them options to buy as well. When you were writing these emails and tracking all of this stuff, like how many emails have you written to get people oh all of these different places? Like how how do you think through that strategy? Thinking about it like strategically, I mean, I, I honestly will sit down with sometimes just like a pen and paper and I will map it out. Like just, okay, we start here. I have arrows going this way, arrows going that way. Um, So... Yeah. I mean, I definitely will think about, I I always think about what does my audience need to hear to take them to the next step? Well, how can I lead them in that direction? And I always try to do it. Well, I always do do it in a very like caring way. Like I'm never like buy this, you have to buy this. I'm always just leading them down that next path 
sharing experiences. I share a lot of testimonials. Um, I'm putting a lot more video in. I'm always paying attention. I'm always going into my, into convert kit. I'm looking at the statistics. I'm seeing what's being opened, what's being clicked on. I have no problem testing an email, testing a headline, moving stuff around. My email strategy is very important to me. It's definitely the number one way that I make money with my digital products. And, def and it's one, it's the number one thing in my business. And I also use chat GPT to help me kind of get my thoughts in order, fill in the blanks with stuff. Um, but I, you know, I try that's That's pretty much how I do it. Like that's, I, I really do just sit down with pen and paper, map it out, brainstorm. I work in chunks. I will sit down and I will just do one at a time. I don't ever try to do five different email sequences at once, but this is also so important. And I think it's so important for everyone to understand this. When you are creating an email sequence and you're creating this whole strategy, you are front loading that work. It's not like food blogging with like video creation or anything else or recipe creation where you're doing it all the time. It's this task that you're always having to do. With email, you front load the work, you get all that work done. And then yes, you're going in and you're checking it and maybe you're making little tweaks. And as you get better, maybe you'll write like a different type of email or you'll add that in. But once you get the majority of that work done, you it, it that now it's like working for you. Now it's automated. Now all you need to do is get people into your funnel, get people into that email, and then just watch it and just watch to see how your audience is reacting to that. And that's that will be where you'll get just a lot, you know, a lot of your ideas or well, maybe I should add this type of email in. Maybe I should talk about this with the product. Maybe I should highlight this feature. So, so, so yeah, were, so I think it's important. If you were, okay, given that you've built all these pieces in your business, let's mm -hmm. say I'm starting new. I'm listening to this podcast. I'm a food blogger and a nutritionist, and I help moms who have picky eaters. I have certain recipes. I have mindset stuff, all of this. So I go... So I say to you, okay, I want to start building my digital product empire. Where do I start? Because you've got so many moving parts, which ultimately I want to get to. But what would be the top three things you say, start do this, then do this, then do this? Yes. So the first thing that I would suggest to someone that is just at the beginning, baby stages of wanting to create a digital product and get an idea the first thing I would do is I always suggest go into your email and start looking at the statistics that your audience are already giving to you. So when you are creating a digital product, you don't necessarily need to like suit your, search your Google Analytics or even search Pinterest. You want to see what is your audience already telling you that they like hearing about. Let's just go through three things a new person should do and create. So they discover what the problem is and they go, okay, I serve moms who have picky eaters. So is, uh, and I recognize that family dinners are painful. That's what mm -hmm. people are clicking on. So do you go, okay, what is the opt-in I can create to help moms, busy moms deal with dinner time with picky eaters? Okay, so in that case, that's still too general for me. So I would want to dig in even more to really identify what painful means. So when when a mom is saying, well, dinners are too painful for me, well, what does that mean? Does that mean that your child just doesn't want to eat broccoli? Or does that mean you're not able to get your kid to dance class on time? You know what I mean? Or does that mean mm -hmm. you, you're not eating dinner as a family because your kids want to, they don't want to eat at five when dad or mom comes home. You know what I mean? Okay. So I would definitely dig more into so that. So let's say I'm making, I end up making five different dishes for everybody in my family. Mm -hmm. Okay, so- 
the pain point is that you're making five different dishes for, okay. Each, so, individual, yeah. per, each individual person. And so what type of digital product they should start like thinking about with that? So, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of like the next step that I would do is really start. Well, I would start generating some ideas specifically for that topic. So I would probably take I honestly I would probably go into chat GPT at that point and I would say, hey, <laughs> chat GPT, I want to write an ebook specifically geared towards moms who are struggling with having to make five different meals for their families every single week. Can you give me 10 ebook ideas for this? Right. And I would just start there. So I would get 10 different ebook ideas. I would look at that. I would then maybe take two or three of them. I would narrow them down even more. And I, or I would also, I was, that's what I would do. I would get that. But the other thing that I would do is I would start looking at the different recipes on my blog that I think I would be able to help my my reader with. And I would start looking at the comments on those as well and getting ideas from there. Because ultimately, your ebook idea is not going to be 10 recipes that like I can make for a mom who cooks, you know, five meals a day. It's, it's really going to focus more on what is the method or the strategy that I have learned myself that I'm able to teach to someone else to relieve that pain point. So maybe you have learned how to cook three, let's just say three meal starters. You've learned how to cook or four, let's say four. You've learned how to put together a sauce every week, a grain every week, a vegetable, and let's say a shredded meat recipe. And you have learned to put where everyone could create their own dinner using those five, four or five different meal starters every week. So that is definitely where the direction I would take with that. Am I starting with my opt-in? Is this my first product? And where would you recommend I go from here? Well, like if I someone just... is just starting out, they're actually in a really good spot because then you can put together, you could really start thinking about that your for your product and getting that solidified. And then also thinking about what that baby step is that you can create an opt-in about. So if you end up creating something, let's just say, you know, how to take three meal starters and make 10 dinners out of it, which I, I mean, I think people would find that to be really helpful. Okay, well, what would that baby step be then? Like how how are you gonna bring them in? Making it a Hershey's Kiss, something they want to yes. open immediately, consume immediately to solve this problem in a small, yes. small way where it's not yes. sitting as a PDF on your desktop that's never going to be open. It's like asking yes. a question, what are the, here are the three easiest meal starters yes. that you need to have dinner on the table tonight in half an hour, something like that. Yes. Okay. Yes. And, and I, and one of the things I always talk to my students about is thinking, like I just said before, thinking about it in terms of your a method or a framework or a strategy, you know, going like thinking beyond the recipes, thinking more like how can you curate a package of your recipes that is going to help solve this problem? Right. So right. like that's how it, you really need to think about it. Because if you're just thinking about it in terms of just the recipes, it's hard to think like, right. well, how am I going to solve this problem? So thinking, how am I cur curating this? All my, my content, my recipes, what can I take from my blog, curate that into a package that is going to help this mom solve this problem. Okay. So you now, so what I like about what you're saying is you're starting with your ebook that solves a specific problem, but from that you're taking a piece of it and you're kind of marketing that as a tiny little taster, a delicious yes. little taster as your freebie or opt-in so you can get their email address and start sending them emails. And then if I were to think about, say, my higher price ticket item, 
from this, what would that be? Well, you can definitely, um, some of the things that I do and I wrote down here, you can create that bigger bundle. So Ooh. now, mm -hmm. yeah, you could, yeah, you could create that bigger bundle so you can put together different, um, you know, that's where you can start putting together like different bundles of recipes that fall under that same theme. Um, like for example, with my healthy challenges kit, I could put together a, a soup challenge or, um, a cleanse challenge, you know, there's all, all like different things that kind of fall under that same theme. So if you're doing, you know, working with moms with that, with that problem of dinner time, what falls under that theme? So I would probably do a, a cut, like a bundle or two. So you can have either like a bigger bundle or an ultimate bundle, you know, and I don't know, I go back and forth with courses when it comes to food bloggers, I think, you know, you really want to have some smaller products to validate what that looks like for your audience first. But I also recommend you could even start create, if you create a bundle, you can put together different cooking workshops, like um, pre-recorded, even pre-recorded and sell it with, with your um, ebook. Like those sell great too. People love that stuff. So there's, there's so many options. One thing that I, I say, and I think that I am being validated, do not go off and create a course for four months. Do not do this. Think of it like you're repurposing content. Do a live workshop. Do small videos that you can bundle together yeah. as a course. The idea that somebody is going to, like we used to do, start at the beginning and get through it. It's much better to be thinking about a quote unquote course, almost like it's not a course. It's like resources that could be provided in a variety of different ways. So the traditional yeah. idea of courses, the issue with that is they take a ton of time and they're harder to validate because you've now sunk all this time into them. I like what you say, which is go do some workshops, go record yourself for an hour teaching something and then bundle these. You could deliver them through email. Just being more creative, being a little less regimented. I say shake it up and be more think out think more outside the box when selling something that could look like a course, but doesn't necessarily have to have all of that structure and all of that time. Yes. And I just think it's important too to know your audience. I think when you're work, when you're selling to just to the everyday average mom, it's just so much, I have found it to be a lot easier to sell things like a digital ebook, a bundle, um, attached to maybe a workshop. The membership on the back end seems to be working good as well. The course works. I, I have sold a lot of my course. So I have, but like I said, in my first interview with you, I had a very nurtured audience and that I nurtured for years before I even sold it. So I'm not, I don't want to like discourage people. I just think that you got to really think through who your audience is, what they're going to uh, pay for, how they want that information laid out. And to be quite honest, I mean, you could still, you could charge quite a bit for digital products. I mean, my ultimate bundle in my shop, it, the full price is $89 and people pay that for, for my entire bundle. And when I put it on sale in there, it's $57. That sells regularly. So, you know, as long as you, you can definitely price your digital products where you're making a nice profit. So you don't necessarily need that big course unless like you have been able to validate that's what your audience wants. So something just to think about. Okay, yeah. so to wrap up this this episode, and we're going to do mm -hmm. a part three where we're going to just talk about Facebook ads because we haven't even had any time for that. Sure. So what you're saying, which I really like, is you've got this problem, like you solve a problem. I I help busy moms with picky kids with dinner time. And I'm going to start with an ebook using ChatGPT. By the way, you can get my ChatGPT ebook prompts by going to mylotree.com slash ebook prompts. And I've got all mm -hmm. the prompts you need to write your entire ebook. Use that. Start there with a very specific problem. I loved how you go, I need a very specific problem. 
right? Mm -hmm. And then you go, what can I pull out of this to create a really enticing, small, 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 but delicious Mm opt-in? And then you're going, okay, on the other side of this, what could I upsell or what could be the next step? And I love your idea of a bundle of other resources that support this ebook. It could be, you know, any sort of guide. It could be a video. It could be like mindset stuff for stressed out moms. However, you want to take that problem and expand it. That's how you want to think about it. And so it doesn't necessarily lead directly into a course that's going to take six months to create. Think more creatively about how to experiment with bundles of products. Yes, absolutely. For sure. And I love this idea that you've got these bundles and you're testing them and you're sending people through email through these automations. But what you said that is really resonating with me is once you've thought through the automations and you've set them up, you've done the heavy lifting. You can then go through, tweak them, learn, go, whoa, people are dropping off here. So how can I fix this email? Or this looks like a leaky part of my bucket of my sales Mm -hmm. funnel. So how do I, how do I fix that? But it's already set up. You can learn and experiment, but most of the work is done. Yeah. And you can, now that I know how to do this, I can get 10 email, 10 email funnel put together in like a week. So, I mean, maybe even less than that. So this isn't something it's taken me a long time only because I've tested so much and only because I've created so much. If you're just doing one product, one funnel, and you're keeping it simple, I mean, this is not going to take you years, especially when you're learning from people who know how to do it and have made mistakes for sure. So yeah, don't feel overwhelmed if you're like, wow, I don't think I can ever put together this funnel or this or that. It honestly, you can get that whole system put together and probably, I'm going to even say like less than a month, you know, when you really just buckle down, really focus, get it done. I mean, and then it's done. And then the front, like you said, it's front loaded, it's done. Now all you need to do is get people into that funnel. And that's what we're going to talk about next time. All right, Tammy, I love you. I love this. I love how granular we're getting. If people want to reach out to you, see your funnels. In fact, I emailed you and said, hey, can you send me the beginning of your funnel so I can go through your funnel just so that I can learn. So if people Mm -hmm. want to reach out to you, learn what you do, connect with you on building funnels, how can they do this? Well, if they want to connect with me on actually building funnels and their ebook and all of that, go to tastydigitaleats.com. If you go to organize yourself skinny, you can definitely get into any of my funnels from there. There's all, but I'm definitely cleaning stuff up, but you can definitely hop into any of my funnels there. And once you go to my website, you'll start getting Facebook ads. (laughs) So then you can just click on me there. That's great. That's great. And I would say to, I mean, we've shared a lot, Tammy, you've shared a lot and this has taken you 10 years of learning. So please, for anybody listening to this, who might be feeling overwhelmed, this can be as easy or as complicated as you want it to be. Start my recommendation, start easy. Yes. Well, and try to keep it easy too. That's what I try to do. You really want to just keep it simple, as simple as possible, go step by step, chunk by chunk, and then it it just gets done for sure. And then you learn what people want and you build from there. Yes, absolutely. A hundred percent. So Tammy, thank you so much for part two. (laughs) And I look forward to us doing part three. Absolutely. I can't wait. I look forward to it. Wow, I hope you guys like this episode. I love how transparent Tammy is, how she is willing to share everything. My biggest takeaway is that this has taken Tammy years to build. So if it sounds complicated, it is, but you don't have to start like that. One thing Tammy continues to share is that for many years, she overcomplicated things. And by simplifying her process, she has had so much success. I think that we all need to hear that. Simplify, simplify, simplify. If you want to start doing this, start putting this together. And remember, 
A simple sales funnel is a freebie, an opt-in that you offer with a simple product you sell on the thank you page. That is a funnel, also called a tripwire. And that is where I recommend you start. If you wanna talk about this strategy, book a 20 minute call with me, it's all free. Go to milotree.com slash meet because you can set all of this up very simply in my low tree card. If you think this episode is valuable, please share it with a friend. If you like what I'm doing over here, I would love it if you gave the show a five-star review. I'm doing a new series on Instagram about how to build your digital product empire in tiny little bits. So please follow me over there and I will see you here again next week. (laughs) 